Pleasure welcome to the Hall of Fame. Now I'd like to ask Brian Murray to step forward. He's going to say a few words. A young man named Golf Joseph. I guess the good news is the longer we stay in here, the colder the beer gets. Is that it? <laughs> Congrats to everybody. I sit here as an alum, a proud alum, and I uh, listen to the stories about the athletes and the families and the coaches that go into the Hall of Fame uh, each and every single year. And uh, it always ruins the notes that I've written. Uh, because really what, what comes out, the constant theme uh, is passion. And when I go through the list of Hall of Famers, what, what jumps out at me uh, is how dominant uh, the list of basketball players uh, and teams uh, fill the pages. But in reality, if you think about it, sports, the College of St. Rose, are very young. Mike Long, uh, my coach uh, and mentor here at St. Rose, who's sitting up here, a member of the Hall of Fame here, really started the men's basketball program. And he and I combined have coached all 45 teams here. And other programs have, have taken a uh, different route and they're much younger. And I think it's tremendous, the accomplishments that we've gotten uh, out of the foundation builders in these programs. Uh, including many of the people here tonight. So congratulations to all of you. You really are the building blocks of these programs. My, my friend Garth Joseph, uh, it, it's been said that timing is everything in life. And uh, picture the summer of 1994, I'm coaching an all-star team with a couple of our St. Rose players. I get off a little puddle jumper uh, on the island of Dominica which coincidentally was hit by Hurricane uh, uh, Marie yesterday. And uh, right now it, it appears as though Garth's family's okay. Because uh, as I got off the plane, the guy I met was Garth Joseph. Uh, we had been on a tour of Caribbean islands, Antigua, Montserrat, and Dominica. Dominica being our last stop, we were there for about a week. and. Garth was the youngest member of the Dominican Basketball Association and as such was our de facto tour guide. And I got to spend a week with the guy. The last night before we were getting ready to come home uh, back to the States, uh, I was sitting with a, a group of uh, delegates from Dominica uh, who were our hosts and Garth was sitting at the next table with all of our players and he was telling them how lucky they were that they had the opportunity to go to school in the United States, and it was always his dream to come here, and I was listening to two conversations at once, got up from the table, walked over, sat down next to him, and I said, listen, um, I, I'm, I'm listening to what you, you're saying here, and uh, I'd love to help you come to the United States, Garth, but we start classes in a week, and in order to come to college in the United States and be a student athlete, you have had to complete your NCAA core curriculum, your, NC, your SAT, the clearing house, and I gave him a list of all this information, and he just sat there listening to me, and when I was done, he said, I have all that. I said, you have all that? He said, I have all that. So my loyal assistant up in the back there, Don Bassett, uh, was sitting at home at about 11 o'clock that night, because it was a late night in the Caribbean, and I called him up, got him out of bed. I said, Coach, I need you to be in the office tomorrow around 7 a.m. I'm on a 10 a.m. flight. I found you a footer. Now, in basketball terms, that means a seven-footer. And he got all excited, but he didn't believe me. So he wanted proof. So I said, Garth's meeting me in the morning. I'm going to fax you all this paperwork. He said, send me a picture. I said, I don't know if I get a picture of this guy. Um, but I did the next best thing. I took Garth in the office of the hotel I was staying, 
and I had him make a photocopy of his hand. <laughs> now, his hand fits on this piece of paper. This would be an eight and a half inch by 11 piece of paper. And I wrote on the bottom of this fax, Coach Bassett, the rest will follow. <laughs> Mary Grando, who's sitting to my right, director of enrollment at the time, uh, says, uh, get us all his paperwork. Her office worked diligently to get uh, the paperwork through. And five days later, Garth was in America. Uh, he had a sleep. In the, hotel, or in the airport in Barbados to get a visa, uh, but he was willing to make the sacrifice for this opportunity and he was prepared for it. When he got here, the first day of our conditioning, Coach Bassett was real excited to watch him work out and run, and he pulls me aside and says to me, Brian, he runs like it hurts. I said, Garth, come here for a second. Um, what size shoes are those? He says, 16. So Coach Passett took him up to Crossgates Mall to help him find out what size he really wore, and his foot wouldn't fit in the device that they measure it in. So, so they guessed. And it wound up being like a 19 and change. He was wearing 16s. He had worn them for a very long time. But they were Nike, so they were cool. Uh, the first game that we played that year, uh, Garth was a little raw. He had to develop his game. And I played in high school for a coach in New York City uh, who, we had two seven footers on our high school team. And he said to me, uh, I have to start these guys. I said, coach, they can't catch the ball. And he said, well, if we don't put them out on the floor, no one will ever fear them or respect them. You have to start a seven footer, Brian. So I always remember what my coach said, and I started Garth, and it was a rough game. It was, I think, one of the two times we've lost our, our home opener uh, in 30 plus years. And people were yelling at me to get him out of the game. Well, that same season, and mind you, uh, I think this is the beginning of my 32nd year. I don't remember any scores. I remember very few games. I remember all the people. But I don't remember scores. It's just not, I don't remember records. Uh, but I happen to remember the first game that he played, the last game that he played his freshman year very, very well. And the reason I remember it is because the last game that he played, we were in the NCAA tournament in New Hampshire. He picked up uh, a, a second foul early in the, the second half. And I took him out of the game because we were in control of the game at the time. And those same people that were yelling at me to get him off the court his first game were asking me if I was crazy for taking him out because he was dominating the game. Uh, he was rookie of the year in the conference. His sophomore year, uh, we had all 27 NBA teams on our campus evaluating his skill levels. At the end of his junior year, he ran out of eligibility because before I met him, he had completed a degree in engineering at a technical school and only allowed three years eligibility as an international student with a technical degree. So he was forced to go play professional basketball. Uh, the, the sad part about it is he went and did that as an ambassador for the College of St. Rose. Uh, he's been all over the world. Uh, he played for first year out, he played for the Boston Celtics, spent some time with the Toronto Raptors before being tra uh, uh, traded to the Denver Nuggets. But since then, he's been in China. Uh, where he dominated the league that Yao Ming was most famous for professionally in China. Uh, he's played in so many countries, there are too many to list, and he's had an incredible life. Along the way, his wife Alicia has had uh, to hold together so many things, uh, and his great family uh, and in-laws are in the back here. Uh, they've also made many sacrifices. And as a result of one of the contracts that he signed, he lost privileges to, to live and work in the United States because he signed a contract to play professionally in Iran. And we had a State Department embargo uh, against trade with them. So he, he had some misfortune along the way. And that challenge never really impacted 
uh, who he is, uh, who he was. Uh, he's always been a very intelligent guy, always a very loyal guy, uh, certainly very, very big. And uh, when Coach Perno and I talk about prospects or recruits, or even our own players, uh, we talk about what their skill is, what their college skill is. And Garth's first college skill uh, really would open the door for him to be able to come here was he was brilliant. Uh, academically, he was was ahead of uh, the curve. And I, I knew that uh, I liked being with him because I spent a week with him in a country uh, that I'd never been before with my family. And he was very, very gracious. And I never really dreamed what would happen once he got here. Uh, because for those of you that that may have been around back then, and I see some familiar faces here. Uh, Garth changed uh, the profile of who we are athletically. Uh, in many ways, uh, we, we, we had a, a national spotlight placed on us. Uh, we, he was, you know, in every major magazine, every major newspaper. Uh, we had, you know, major sports outlets, news outlets coming here to listen to his story. And, and it was really exciting to watch uh, how, I guess we, we refer to it as the Garth phenomenon, uh, changed our institution uh, through the window of athletics. Uh, and then and now, he continues to serve as an ambassador for the College of St. Rose, and he's always done it uh, with a great big heart. Uh, anybody that knows him knows that he's very genuine. Uh, some people can feign sincerity, uh, not Garth. Uh, he is who he is. He was raised by good people. He's always had good values. Uh, and as a coach, uh, my coaches, I got into coaching, my coaches, including Mike Wong, uh, were some of the people who changed my life. Uh, but the tables have turned. Uh, clearly for me, the players, including some of the young men that I have now, uh, have, have changed my life, not the other way around. Uh, and, and Garth really illuminated that for me. He changed uh, my experience as a basketball coach and the way things we, the way we do things here. And he opened up avenues for us that I never, ever, ever uh, anticipated. So, uh, I guess, in closing, as I bring Garth up here, as I pointed out, he's a good man, He's a good friend. He's an ambassador for St. Rose. The only thing left to complete, really, is we got to get this guy his degree. Garth Joseph, come on up here. Um, I haven't had any contact with my mama yet, 
but my neighbors, I got a text out from them and they say she's all right. So our house down home and our, my mother is fine. So that was good. Remission of me not to mention also if you um, care to go online and look at the various charities, the various um, places you can donate, not only to Dominica but to Puerto Rico and all the other country, um, countries devastated by um, these uh, powerful storms. Um, as you know, also even um, in Mexico had a massive earthquake 7.1. So all these people are in need of you and um, help, and um, we are pretty good out there. So if we can help out, it would be. Uh, you know, appreciated by those people. So thank you very much for that. Uh, for the sweet part, I'd like to first of all thank all of the um, Seth Rose family. And I truly believe Seth Rose is not just a school or an institution, it's a family. Uh, the athletic de department, um, Kathy Haker, Haley, um, Coach Bury, um, which obviously I will be talking about quite often um, in this segment here. David Alexander, the only person I know that don't age. Uh, David doesn't get looks <laughs> like he doesn't get any uh, David was there maybe since um, Seth Rose was an all girls school and he's still going strong today, so congratulations on that, David. Um, <laughs> I'd like to um, you know, say um, congratulations to the five of us that were the doctors, so my fellow doctors, Ashley, Stephanie, Matt, and Brandon. Um, I'd like to also thank um, all the um, teachers that um, taught us here at um, St. Rose. Um, I saw one of my uh, math teacher here. She always um, wanted me to get my degree, so I'm working on that. Um, I'd like to thank also all the families here that are um, uh, friends, former teammates and present teammates of basketball or the sports that are here to um, celebrate with us. I'd like to thank my um, whole family. My, my brother-in-law, Terry Duffy, the back there, he was my, my boy, we hang out a lot. Um, I'd like to thank his, my um, sister-in-law, Sabrina, you know. Um, I'd like to thank my mother-in-law, Mama. Uh, she always say, um, I'm a favorite son-in-law. I'd like to thank her. <laughs> and uh, big Duffy Pickering and her husband, John. Um, that's, Last year we were inducted as a team, so they made that trip. This year I didn't think they would make that trip, but they, they're here again. Like if I'm, I'm all my children, uh, I have a big boy, 19, Gaff, two. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, a big girl that's like, following my food step in basketball, Analda. Analda is 15. She was supposed to be here today, but she um, fell sick because of some infection before she had a root canal. I'd like to um, also thank my Taylor, Tay Tay. She's 12. Hi. I want to play basketball, but we fight in the battle. <laughs> uh, I can find also my, my youngest, uh, Ashley Jordan. She hides back there. And of course, my wife, my best friend. This is truly, my wife and I have met here at St. Rose. Um, at the time, we were just friends. And we became quickly best friends. And um, eventually married half children and uh, Still, my best friend. Uh, I love you, Doc. Um, I'd like to thank everybody at St. Rose that was um, you know, instrumental in my development and uh, I guess not only education, but life taught me how you know, to be a, a man. Uh, and that goes not only to the coaching staff and teachers, but also to uh, even the guys on campus. I remember we had a security, a chief of security, Bob Smith. This guy was, I talked to him every day. Uh, some of the kitchen staff, people in the Camelot room, didn't make a difference. They were all good friends and family members at St. Rose. St. Rose had that kind of a community, you know. Um, I can remember a lot of stories. Uh, of course, like Stephanie say, when you sit down here and you listen to people speak about you, you often wonder did that really happen? Because it sounds so incredible. When it's happening to you at the time, you don't really think like that. You just know you have a job to do and you try your best. You do what you have to do. You do it with passion. I, I come, I'm coming from the Caribbean, so just being in America, I thought I made it. Just being in America. I, I stepped into JFK and I'm like, I finally got to America. I don't have to do anything else in my life. 
I died. I made it. That was the trip. I got to America and that was it. Because I had a dream when I was in Dominica, and honestly, the dream was to come to America, see the Statue of Liberty, and eat a McDonald's. That's it. And I, 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 I think um, Coach can attest to that. I did a little bit too much of the latter, the latter when I first got there. And, um, he had to put me on a diet for that. So I think he can attest to that. Um, but when I, when I came here, and to see the passion from the beginning of my arrival. As soon as I land in the airport, we, let, we get to America around 12 in the, in the night, midnight show. I was picked up by two of uh, my t former teammates, Cameron Rice and Totoba. And we had to drive all the way back, but we stopped at Cameron, mom and dad home first uh, in Brewston. And uh, first of all, it was foggy. It looked like something out of Jason. <laughs> I was a little scared. There were some hitchhikers that Cameron decided to slow down to talk to. And I said, are you crazy? <laughs> Have you ever seen the movies? <laughs> He's like, you 7 too. What you scared about? <laughs> so we get to Brewster and Cameron's father said, oh man, finally I got a guy that can eat with me. They brought me downstairs in the basement with food. It had a table maybe about 20 foot long, full of food. And they're like, we were anticipating you go and eat. And I'm like, are you crazy? <laughs> we have a banquet, who's coming? That's about in the morning. He's like, no, it's for you. I'm like, I can't eat all that food. He's like, come on, man. Don't embarrass me. <laughs> I got to say, Rose was very cold. Of course, I was dressed for the Caribbean weather. <laughs> I decided to dress in the only one dress outfit I had at the time. Uh, a polka dot shirt and a uh, slacks. And let me tell you something, that all of us was cold. I felt the wind pass through my bone marrow. <laughs> and I said to Cameron, oh my God, is it this cool in here? And he's like, are you crazy? It's, it's still summer. What are you talking about? He's like, you come from the Caribbean and you come upstate and you're afraid of cold. What's wrong with you? It doesn't say I got um, adapted to it. I'd like to say thanks also to um, uh, the assistant coach that came down to the, um, the Caribbean East coach was Bob Castlewood. He was 6'8". I was still he's 6'8". I hope he's not shrinking. <laughs> and um, he kind of gave me some of his older clothing, even though they were shorter length. Some of them fit me kind of like this. But it was better than nothing because I was cold. And that was August. Um, I quickly um, adapted because um, like I told Coach when he asked me, and that story is totally true, when he asked me if I'm, you know, about next year, I'm like, I'm ready. Because I've been planning this trip before he got here. And I had all my paperwork done. So it's just like adapting to the different system. I had to do that um, rather quickly. Because most of the, the young men I played basketball with were already superstars in their own right in various high school. I only started playing at the age of 16. And here I am, four years later, in America, trying to play in uh, one of, a very tough conference. Um, and we a lot of expectations. I was coming up here just to get my little degree and play a little basketball and, you know, fade into the dark, man, and fade into the night. <laughs> but, um, like Coach showed me, the first picture Coach showed me was the Times Union front page with this same handprint. The rest to come, and every news reporter wanted to know what I was going to do, they keep calling me Shaq too. And uh, that's a lot of um, pressure on a person that doesn't know how to run up and down the basketball court. Uh, and I can find also Coach um, Bassett. Coach Bassett was like our, the grandfather. Coach Bureau really get angry or make, can you do something? And Bassett would come and say, take it easy, don't worry about it. I have a lot of, um, you know, little um, anecdotes to get you going when they were feeling down, and trust me, there are many times when we had to do a, a suicide under 32 seconds, that it was a tough one. We had six o'clock morning practices, those were tough too. Um, I have all eight o'clock classes, so I went to class after I showered, but you would be sweating while you showered. <laughs> it would take me till nine o'clock to stop sweating, and the teacher always tells me, you know, you gotta come here more relaxed, and I'm like, are you crazy? <laughs> I just run for two hours. Stuff I never used, you know. So it, 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 it was a, a bit getting used to, but the one thing I learned about Seth Rose is trust. 
Um, Coach Beery had a thing in the, in the, in, and I'm, I'm sure he tweaked it a bit, but we used to go camping on an island. Um, it's called, I was going to call it Bird Island in um, Lake George. And it was a way to build a team trust where he wouldn't have anything to do but take his boat and bring us to the island. We had to collect tents and everything and organize that. When he told me we were going over there, I'm like, Coach, what do I have to bring? I've never been camping. I'm from the Caribbean <laughs> and I'm black. <laughs> we don't like camping. We see enough of this tragic story. We don't get that. What do I have to do? He's like, I don't know nothing about this. You talk to your captain. And I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> so we get to Bird Island. Ralph Bochy, uh, fellow inductee, I think he was inducted two years ago. Ralph Bochy told me, I got a tent, I got you. Well, the tent had a hole. It leaked. All my clothes got wet. So for three days, I had to wear the same clothes, smoky. Uh, we brought chicken, but nothing to cook it with. <laughs> we had one flashlight, and Coach had that. <laughs> he had his own little pop up tent, so he could not be bothered. I had to, what we call in those days, MacGyver or something. I, I say, Coach, do me one favor. I know we're not supposed to go back to the mainland, but please go back there and we're going to get some kerosene of some sort. We end up getting um, Fina, paint Fina. And I make some torches. I use um, pine sticks to grill some chicken, which was good because the pine infused chicken tasted so good. The next year, the guys deliberately forgot the grill <laughs> and the flashlight. So we had to make the goose eyes again. We had those nice, very fine bottles. So I mean, thinking back of some of the good stuff we had here, we had also we had a thing we had to do falling backwards in the in the arms of all these people. They would stand up, we stand on a bleacher and we fall backwards. Now this was terrifying. We have to look, just fall backwards. I'm trusting these guys to hold up a 300 pound guy. Come on. <laughs> I did it. There was another thing we had to drunk a rope. You put a rope across the room and everybody had to get across the room and he gave us one piece of two by four. And he had to figure it out. I'm like this guy. <laughs> but all these things we figured it out and it helps us out because I'm telling you many of the games they were tough. Many of the games we had to find a way to win. I remember playing the team that beat me in the open that I coach tell you about there. I didn't know any better. I dumped in warm up. Technical foul, two shots with they made. And um, we lost by two that game. I remember the exact score, we lost by two. And I remember feeling, man, it was, it's kind of good and bad. I just had the best game of my life. I scored 12 points, I had like 12 rebounds. And people are boring me, what's going on here? And then we lost, and then Coach said, God, follow me. And I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> this man is either gonna kill me, or put me in a bus, and then I'm going back to the bus. <laughs> we walked all the way down, the, the, the whole configuration of the um, gym was a little different. He walked me all the way down, he's, he's just walking in front of me, and he got the little walk, and I'm just behind him. Like, <laughs> we walked all the way back down, all outside, past the training room, past, past the time. You see all the pictures on the Hall of Fame wall. That used to be Bob Belize um, for the uh, baseball. We passed all past that. Everybody looked at me like, uh oh, execution. <laughs> <laughs> Pushed the, open the double doors by Cafe Hague at the office, Cafe Hague was still there, pushed the handling office at the time. Pushed open the second one, and it snowed. My first snow. And he said, welcome to America. And I'm like, Phew. I'm so, I'm so happy I wasn't going to be killed or sent back home. I'm making snow angels <laughs> in my basketball and uniform. For the first time, I did not feel cold. I think I was just mad for one day, what's going to happen? But this is the kind of story that went on with Shen Rose. And this is the kind of family that has Shen Rose. We've grown together. We've cried together. We've had many losses. Of course, we didn't have like the football loss like Brandon um, can talk about. But we had uh, many um, um, days where it was a little hard country. And um, we, we all went in the storm. You know, I remember um, coming back from the um, Elite Eight, which we got killed. In order we put them to um, talk about it, we lost by 30 points. Man, that was rough. Because that year we were ranked number two in the country, so we thought we, you know, we were big, big shots and we were going to do very well. Um, we thought we were going to bring national title back to St. Rose, and we lost very bad. 
We were playing a team you know, that was a little, we were off match. And um, it was very tough right back. But there was Don Bassett and old Coach Mack, lifting spirits. Uh, Coach Mack, I believe, had just got his um, pilot license. And um, I remember um, Don Bassett saying, Coach Mack, did you get a license? He said, yeah, I did. He said, why don't you go fly the plane? And, Don, and Coach Mack said, no, I can't do that. I just got my license two weeks ago. And Don Bassett turned to Coach Mack and he said, I was talking to the pilot in the, um, in the lobby before we got on the plane. He said he got in a week ago. <laughs> That didn't go well if the woman sitting next to me. I don't know who she was, but she held my hand the entire flight. And every little turbulent, she was squeezing. And that's why that left hand is a little small right now. Right? And, and so I, like I said, you know, we had many of um, the thing. And I was fortunate to also meet my wife here, uh, you know, make sure. And, and um, come back every time I flew back because like coach said, I played many different places. I was in China for four years, so rather say hi to everybody for me. They all know me. Don't worry about it. They all know me. Yeah, they, they don't say calf or calf jokes. If they will not remember that, say get sir. They know that. So four years in China. I was in Iran, like you said, for three and a half. Egypt. I played in Greece. Ukraine. Uh, I forget that getting old, so it's, don't worry if I'm David, I'm not that young at all. <laughs> I, I, I actually guess um, this year maybe 20 years since I left St. Rose. Uh, I just celebrated the 44th birthday, so I, I'm kind of like a <laughs> But yeah, I've played many different countries, and the one thing I learned is you can survive anywhere if you really want to. You can do anything you want to do if you really want to do it, because Yes, as America is a great country, and I still think, although I love my country, it may be the greatest country in the world, because anybody can be successful in America. No matter what you do, you have great support staff to help you. But coming here the first time, it was nerve-wracking, it was scary, it was something new. I still recall my mother and my and coach, when coach decided to give me the scholarship, they sat down in the living room and having this recruiting trip after the fact. They usually have the recruiting trip before the kid is going. Or everything is set for me to go and my coach is talking to my mother like he's trying to recruit me. My mother is asking like, well, I don't know, you're gonna take care of my son. And I'm like, shut up. Let me go, I wanna know what's wrong with you. So even then, you know, bringing me here, it was, it was never I came, I had to learn a whole new system. So it kind of prepared me for going to a place like China. Many people have tried to play um, overseas and it wasn't easy for them because the food is different, the culture is different. There's the speech. Whether they say they speak English, I, I mean, I hope some people here um, uh, understand what I'm saying because the Caribbean we speak English, but we have a different accent. And coach always used to tell the my teammates, listen to him with an accent because he's got a heavy accent and you might not understand what he's saying. They let you say some of the words we say doesn't make any sense. If you, you were in my country, you wanted a, a pot to cook some food, you say a bomb. Now you can't say that now, you might get arrested. <laughs> but you will say a bomb. So there are many things that we do differently, even though we are all the same in what we have tried to achieve. Now I know that you guys want to get out of here. Um, you know, like Steph said, uh, the best for last. I am the last for. I'm gonna say thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna say closing. Thank you everybody for showing up. Thank you for being a part of Seth Rose family. And the inductees, we are now part of a different class. So even now, more so, we have to go out and I could say be an ambassador for Seth Rose. I hope everybody here, um, you know, that was not only inducted but was part of the induction because of the um, their family being inducted, understand that hard work can get you anything you want. And it's not only hard work as an athlete, because like I said, the, the distinction doesn't say athlete, it says student athlete. So you have to work in the classroom. Um, the, I watch all the young basketballers, and I've spoken to them several times since I've been back. Um, you guys know the tradition we have here, you know? 
and like we say, the foundation, I feel the guys like Jeff Moore and before me paved the way for me. It's like I paved the way going forward for the guys. The success that the teams that came after me had was much better than we did, and that is all on me. I take all the credit for that. <laughs> I take all the credit for that. So when they say, oh, when did this final four? I'm like, oh, you think you got that? <laughs> you know? um, before I go, I'd like to say um, a special thanks to one more person I just looked up for. I saw her there. My sister. There's so my sister, Alex. No longer there's a beer ring. <laughs> Alex just got married. And, um, <laughs> I see Alex now, a grown woman. And I remember Alex, a seven year old, in the pool in Dominica. By the way, Alex, that hotel was destroyed. Yes, my, that's, my, my, friend, my friend actually owned that hotel, so it, that, that's a little bad. But I remember Alex and, and young Brander at the time was in the pool swimming around, and Alex said, Throw me. I'm like, okay. I look at Brian and say, boy, I throw her, man. So I hold Alex in this one hand like this and I chop her across the pool. <laughs> and she's going, Wee! and I'm like, she's not coming down. <laughs> she landed about three feet from the edge of the pool and I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> I was like, this guy is gonna kill me. I look around, coaches that didn't care. Brian, look at Brian, like me, like, I'm like, mm mm. <laughs> like, I wanna go. I'm like, no way. <laughs> so, to watch um, Alex, grown woman now, beautiful young lady, ready to come back in a bit, there is a thing of her life, make me, you know, part of the family. And also, coach your um, wife, Mary Ellen, not here, but Mary Murray, as um, she's here. Oh my god. Mary another one that adopted me, her family, her, her, her father, her mother, their sisters, they all adopted me when I first came here, so thank you very much. Thank you, Sandra Rose, Kathy Aker, David Alexander, everybody, my photographer for 20-something years. Thank you very much. 